Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Michelle. I'm here today with Mark, who is the North uh, North American Sales Director for Robo Wonderkin. I am here with Edgescape, an educational company who strives to rethink learning by design, designing solutions to inspire inquiry and creativity and collaboration. Today's webinar is about Robo, a small robot with a big future. This presentation is designed to give you a brief overview of the STEM coding and robotics application of Robo Underkin for grades pre-K all the way through fifth. Before we get started for today, let's review a few things. Uh, first, in the chat, if you wouldn't mind letting us know where you're from, we'd like to know uh, where you're, what you teach, where in the uh, world you're tuning in from, and then we'll get to, into today's agenda. So we're gonna start with the introduction, just going through some of the basics of how this webinar is going to work. Then in the story, we're gonna go through the story of Robo Wonderkin, walk you through what is Robo. We'll learn about the modules, what they are in the kit. We'll talk about the coding element that you use when you use those modules. Then we'll go into the actual teaching application and then leave time at the end for a Q&A. For today's learner outcomes are identify the modules, including the Robo Wonderkin Education Kit, explain the skills that are developed as a result of integrating Robo Wonderkin into your classroom, and explore Robo Wonderkin pre made curriculum. Just to give you a heads up on the logistics of Livestorm. So, first, the chat that I can hear all of you using right now and see, that's where we'd like you to ask any questions that you have throughout the webinar. Mark's gonna do his best to help facilitate some of those questions. We'll answer any that we don't see uh, answered in there at the end. There's also going to be a poll tab. This poll tab you see on that side there, we're gonna post polls now at the beginning and we'll post some more at the end. And we appreciate if you can go in and answer that, those questions to give us some feedback. Today's webinar also will be recorded. We tell you for two reasons, one to promote good digital citizenship and our second is to, so you get a copy of what this uh, webinar is so you can go and watch it again after. So let's dive into what is the Robo Wonderkin story. So Mr. Daniels, is a second grade teacher. He has a class of mixed learners, some with cognitive disabilities, some with even physical. He has English language learners, emerging readers, a mix of everything. As he learns about what to teach his students and looks around the world, he realizes that coding is an essential skill, but he wonders how he can teach and promote these 21st century skills in his classroom he notices that there's unfriendly hardware. There's bare electronics. There's hundreds of line of code. None of these are child friendly. They're not safe. Students who have cognitive or physical disabilities really wouldn't be able to use them. And code is not easy for our emerging readers, ENL learners, or even most adults can't figure out what they mean. So how is he gonna now teach coding, such an important skill to his class or ro and robotics? Robo Wonderkin changed that. So Robo Wonderkin created two uh, multiple kits in different robotics. And what they did is they took unfriendly sensors like our un ultrasonic sensor here, and he, they changed them to look like a block a child's toy. So now kids aren't using these bare, unfriendly electronics. They have a brand new toy friendly object that they feel engaged and want to play with. Robo Wonderkin was launched in 2017 with the mission to create a playful environment for all learners to learn the 21st century skills. Since then, Robo has now entered 15 countries, including here in the US. They come from uh, they're used in over 500 schools. Over 80,000 kids have played with Robo and have been aided through the 80 plus hours of an educational content that right now Robo offers for free. 
We'll even get touch base on that in a little while. They've successfully launched two different product generations, and I know that more are they're under work shortly with, and they've sold over uh, 120, uh, yes, 12,000, sorry, robotic sold, robots sold. So now let's take a look at the education kit, and I actually have the education kit here with me. They do have other kits, but we're gonna focus on the education kit. So this, all of their products right now are geared for grade five uh, through grade pre-K through grade five learners. And they focus on the visual and block-based coding. So now let's dive into this box. So this is what's offered inside the kit. So I'm actually going to start with the main block here, this orange block. The main block is the brain behind the operation. The coding starts and ends here. We'll actually get into this a little bit. After you pick up the main block, there's universal connectors that you can use. They easily snap right into the main block. And what you can do, even if you didn't want to take them off, you can take them off easily with that disconnection tool. Also, as you're exploring the blocks, you're gonna see that kits themselves, it's easy to pick up, they're easy to put together. The DC motors now gives them a chance to move around in an easy, fun-filled way. There's the servo motor, which now gives Robo the opportunity to move in directions and specific angles it can be programmed to. There's also fun things that you can use to extend your builds with kids by adding just different connector blocks to make the blocks larger. And then probably some of the cool things that the block they offer are different things like the light that you can use, the RGB light, and even a button. Both of these can be used to just plug right uh, to have Roro light up or use the button to program it to do different things. There's multiple types of wheels that are offered, different wired connectors. But probably one of the coolest things that I love is the distance sensor because it looks like Robo's face and it gives kind of a character to the robot when being used. So now since we understand what these blocks look like and how easy they can come put together, you should also know that they come apart just as easy. So you don't have to worry about that disconnection. Now, also, besides just putting the blocks together, there's this huge makerspace application. There's these one sort of connector called the Lego connector. And what's great with the Lego connector is it allows Legos to be connected to it. This extends the build to go much further than just what the blocks offer. But you can also use those pre that makerspace supplies. And what's great about the makerspace supplies is students can create things, turn Robo into a fairy, a dragon. You really use their imagination because they're not just glued to what these blocks are. Now let's go into the coding with Robo. So everything, like I said, starts and ends with this main block. So when you're using the main block, it it's easy to turn on, quick button. Once it's turned on, the Bluetooth automatically is connected. What's great is Robo doesn't require Wi-Fi. With the Bluetooth connection, you can connect to a phone, a tablet, a computer. And if it's connected to computer, then you can even put it on an interactive board to share and code with your students. And since, again, it doesn't need Wi-Fi, if the school's Wi-Fi crashes or the home doesn't have Wi-Fi or anywhere you are, it doesn't make a difference. You can still code with Robo. There's three apps that Robo offers right now. Robo Live, which is the most basic app where it starts with visual coding. You start using Robo like a remote control, and then you really start to learn how to move the blocks in the modules once they are put together. Robo code is a little bit more complex. Now it's still visual coding, but now students get to make logic statements and use actions and conditionals to program Robo to make different complex algorithms. Then the newest one is Robo Blockly. 
now students move out of that visual-based coding into a block-based coding. And they now, they still have logic statements, but they have different variables and functions they can program as well. So let's dive into these apps. So this is what the RoboLive app looks like when you log in. The one side has the visual coding codes, that all those codes are also color coordinated with the blocks. So orange is always gonna be sound. So I know if I'm using my main block here, which you will, I can program Robo to make a sound of some sort. What's great also is I know blue is going to be movement always. So every color matches the codes that apply to it. And because it's visual coding, not just because it's color coordinated, but because it has picture blocks, so a picture of an object being pulled, anyone who's an emerging reader or even English language learners don't have to worry about knowing uh, how to read to code. With RoboCode, the next app, students still get used to that visual coding element. They still will get to see that orange means sound, so when they drag an orange piece uh, code to the screen, and those are the blocks that it can use. But now they even have a higher level. So instead of using it as a remote control, what they pull onto the screen, they make different uh, logic statements. So by connecting different pieces together in an order, they learn about what is an algorithm. They learn about what's the algorithmic uh, patterns that can be made they start realizing if they even use logic statements. So using things like our button here, to if it's pushed, what happens? If it's not pushed, what happens? They start to build those logic statements, which they need for math, as well as coding, robotics, and other skills. They're able to make those connections. Robot Blockly is a brand new app. It was just launched last month in March. And now it moves into block-based coding. It still follows very similarity, similar features where it's still color co coordinated. However, it's a little more complex now. It, you can see it looks very similar to other programming block-based programming softwares like Scratch. But now there's a whole new element. Students can program different variables and functions. They can put think, Robo on, say, loops, where they have to repeat things multiple times. They can change different functions of how he uh, pivots, turns, what they sense. And this requires more math. And students really have to think about how do you, they make their program work and what makes it applicable. With this being said, now they have inputs and outputs that they're mapping. So for example, they can program an input, which could be the ultrasonic center and it's detecting that a movement is coming near it. And then what's gonna happen because that movement is coming near it? Is Robo going to back up? Is Robo going to light up? So they really get to control what those inputs and outputs are and how Robo reacts because of them. Because Robo offers such easy applications that in that gradual release from very simple visual coding like remote all the way up to the comp more complex of the block-based coding, learners feel engaged and ready to use it. Here you can see some examples of different projects that have been used. So there's a cat feeder there's mixing bowls, there's different drawing tools. What's great about these projects is they do multiple things. They include Legos, they include outside makerspace tools, things you can find around your house. But then the learners really can do anything that their mind imagines by, uh, by doing these projects. And what's great is because students find Robo so easy to build, so easy to code with, that it's less pressure on the teacher because the students already feel engaged to learn. They want to be a part and build with Robo. So now let's take a look at it from that teacher perspective. So Robo Wonderkin itself offers a ton of free products on their website. So first they have a core curriculum where they have the teacher's guide, they have introductory projects, school lessons, but they also provide resources for all of those. They have impact evaluation systems, 
They have additional topics on things that are not just the part of their school curriculums they offer, like road safety, math, and storytelling. And they have more products that are coming out um, soon and all the time. And then they even have other workshops and summer camp stuff that they're offering as well. What's great is all you have to do is go to the Robo website and they'll be able to walk you through how to use the product. Let's take a, one as an example. So here's a lesson from Robo Wonderkin. It gives the project name, it gives the concepts being taught, and it gives the complexity level right away. So the teacher, you can tell this is a day seven of a project or project seven that they're working on. So they've built up some skills at this point using Robo. However, Robo walks them through. It gives the story so the students feel connected to Robo. They feel that they wanna help Robo. They give a problem situation so students understand what they need to figure out. And you can then discuss what is the solution to that problem and it even gives it for you. After this part in the lessons from Robo Wonderkin, they walk you through what you can do. It's a step-by-step -step direction basis so you don't have to worry about what you should be doing, what blocks need to be used. And it gives examples of the codes that students should be using and building and how to go about it. Other resources that they have that are great are the Getting Started Guide. This breaks down everything you would need to know about the education material in a nutshell. Then the Teacher's Guide talks about the tools, gives insightful tips on how to work with Robo. Also, how what's needed, how does it charge, where, where should you store it, how do you use the different coding elements. And then it also gives different support. So, um, I don't know why I wrote this. So modules, coding buttons, and different icons that you can print and use around your classroom to help students. Probably one of the other greatest materials that they offer is they have a teacher planning journal. So you can sit and plan out what you're gonna do with Robo, but then the student portfolio. So students can then build their portfolio over time, talk about their experiences with Robo. And what they can even add into there is the pre-made worksheets. This is a place where students write down, they draw pictures, they make predictions, and they learn about what they're doing at, uh, with, as guided by the teacher through the lesson. Something great to know is that all of Robo's content is aligned to multiple types of standards. So first, they're aligned to the ISTE standards, the Common Core State standards, the SISTA computer standards, the UN sustainability goals, um, the next generation science standards, and we've also aligned them to uh, te the Texas education standards as well, TEKS. So Robo is very versatile when it comes to the standards that it reaches. And the school lessons, even especially the school days lessons, even will state the ISTE and the SISTA and the uh, Next Generation Standards and everything that it's reaching. So now as a teacher, Mr. Daniels from the beginning of our story feels a little bit more connected with Robo. He understands that Robo is going to support his learning of coding as well. There's gonna be that free content and step-by-step -step lessons that he can use to teach his students. He knows that there's teacher guides and other support material that's going to help get him started. His students know that there's all different resources um, that the apps are going to be easy for them to use. It doesn't require them to know how to read. It doesn't require them to be English language speakers. So on top of all of this, there is a Robo Wonderkin Academy. So this is an e-learning course that was developed by us here with Educate with Partners with Robo to help teach teachers how to use Robo Wonderkin. There's five modules, so five different types of lessons in the course. First, a basic orientation. Module two dives into content similar to what we're talking about today. So meeting Robo Wonderkin, learning about these modules, learning about how they fit together. Module three breaks down into what is Robo Wonderkin your favorite classroom tool? So why we're going to talk about classroom management with Robo to how to include students, the tech management side, as well as now we're going to get into the coding element. So we're going to break down what how to code with Robo. What does it mean to code with Robo? 
will go into the different applications that is offered so you can learn step by step all the different coding features and know how to they are applicable in the classroom. Module four now goes into building your own lesson plans with Robo. So at this point, we know that there's the content and the lesson plans they provide, but how else can Robo be applicable in your own lesson plans? And we also go into different ways to align it with STEM and other forms of lesson plans to use in your classroom. And then module five, the last, is making Robo accessible for all types of learners. So how does this support with the uh, universal design for learning? How can it be used to provide emotional uh, support for uh, students? How can it be used using different standards to um, make it so all students, with despite the, what challenges they have in learning, can code? So now we are at that point in our webinar where we will answer some any questions that you have. So I am just going to stop sharing my screen with you shortly. Um, and then we'll take those questions that you have. Again, there is that poll that is up. So please feel free to answer the questions in the poll. Let us know. We definitely would like some feedback. And it's great that we have so many people in here right now. Um, any questions? I'm sorry, I didn't hold up the blocks higher. I didn't for you before. So here they are. This is what I was assembling. So you can see. So there's the different blocks all on here. There's a few. Uh, I didn't add his little wheel that's in here as well. So what's great with these blocks is um, they're very easy to put together. And you don't have to really worry about what, how to take them apart, because like I said, they're very kid friendly. They are geared for our little younger learners, so they don't have to worry. Um, so I'm just going through and trying to figure out some more questions for uh, that you have. So the Academy, if you have any questions about that Robo Wonder Kitten Academy, I know Mark has been in the chat. Um, please, uh, we'll follow up with emails from Mark and he'll be able to give you more information about the pricing of the Academy and knowing more about it that way because it is a paid um, program. Sure, so I'm gonna share those uh, perspectives with you. I'm gonna, uh, so Mark want, asked me to share perspectives about the visual cues built into the apps. So I'm actually gonna pull up an app on my phone right now so you can see it um, from both Robo and from my phone. So you have an idea. So I'm going to go into uh, Robo Code. So Robo Code is one of my favorite apps with Robo. Um, what you do with RoboCode is you connect the robots right away using the app. And the visual cues are pretty easy to go about. So what happens is if I would like Robo to move or go somewhere, all I have to do in the app, and I'm just going to click my new stuff, I'm hoping that you guys can see, is I'm gonna drag something from down here. So I'm now gonna just even just drag his little robot noise up here. And I can either hit play, Ooh. and he'll start playing those sounds right away. And otherwise, if I wanna make these more complex things, like I'll have Robo go forward, I can now draw lines and connect things together. So I have Robo here. He's gonna first now, if I hit play, make that noise and then his wheels will move. And that's what makes it really great. It's super easy with those visual cues. So they know that arrows are gonna be movement. So it's learning about how to go about it that way. Um, if you're looking for that more complex building platform, that's when you're, besides using those visual cues for younger learners, that's where I would recommend going into RoboBlockly. That does make it a little bit more complex. Students really can use that block-based coding platform. And what's great is going from those visual perspectives, which you don't need to read 
uh, for reading is you can then pop right into using it uh, with Blockly that still doesn't require reading on a high, high level, but they can still manipulate the blocks that way. So now you're talking about, um, I do see a question from Jessica about the management. You have 25 students and that's great. So um, what the best way to manage since you have two education kits is you're gonna probably wanna break this down into a set, uh, small group time because you're gonna want those kids to be working one-on-one -on -one with Robo or being partnered with another student. I would recommend, like Mark said, no larger than groups of three, probably. What's great with Robo is you can really learn those about 21st century skills that also focus on collaboration with your students using Robo. So putting it as a center or a station. Um, what's great, and I is I'm seeing things um, about the makerspace applications. So what's great is after the best, some of the easier ways to introduce a robot to the class, if you don't wanna dump, jump into the coding element right away, is just getting them playing with robo, putting these blocks together, show, letting them figure out on their own and discover what they can do. Then doing those makerspace scenarios using robotics where they can draw and manipulate things. I'm those pictures I showed earlier of like the cat food dispenser. That's a great and interesting way where it's, it's very no, not budget uh, heavy. It's objects you find around your house, toilet paper tubes, cardboard rolls, where students now can like build on top of Robo to really take the coding element to the next feature besides just, I'm gonna make Robo move forward. So I'm going, I'm sorry, I'm still going through some of your questions on here. Um, I apologize, I saw the message on the small window. Um, so you can, on my uh, screen that you couldn't see, I do apologize for that. I, we're hoping that wouldn't happen. So, like Mark is saying, you don't need internet when you're using Robo. However, when you're downloading the app, you'll need internet to download it from. It's you, uh, I see, Linda, you want to use it with iPads. iPads are probably one of the better options for it. Also, when the blocks need to be updated, so if they came out with the new um, firmware, like Mark is saying in the chat, that is the best place um, you do need internet to update them. And it alerts you as soon as you go into the app. So before when I went to go show you how to just even code with him, I needed to update a quick couple modules. I hit the one button because it popped up, I needed it. And then I was able to start coding. But they give all of these how-to tutorials and they give support on how to do this. Um, if you have questions about how to download the app or what you need to do for setup. So if when you're getting started with Robo Wonderkin, I see that um, another one, Linda, uh, that so you're just getting approved for these education kits. That's great. Pre-ordering iPads is one of the best things. After you get the iPads, it would definitely be setting them up with the apps and then just getting yourself as a teacher acquainted with what they are. Um, depending on your age group, starting them with some of the uh, lower leveled apps with the visual coding. So if it's pre-K, kindergartners, definitely try using some of those younger apps. And then for our older guys, if they can, and if they're ready, using Robo code and Robo Blockly eventually to even introduce them to block-based coding. However, we are almost out of time. So any last minute questions, let us know. If not, it's been great. Thank you for joining us. Please answer those poll questions before you leave in the poll tab on the side. We'd love to get that feedback from you. Thank you again for, um, for joining us today. It was great. Thank you. Um, if you have any questions, please email Robo Wonderkin. I'll show these up close one more time. They're so much fun. He's pretty cute. I'm so, I'm rather, can't wait for your kids. I'm so glad 
I know that you guys are at home. You're teaching from home. This is hard. Thank you again for tuning in. Give one last look at these little modules. Hopefully once you're back in school, the kids will enjoy using this. And stay healthy and safe, everyone.